Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at quadrilaterals. This is um, probably directly after the lesson you did on triangles. So if you haven't done the triangles one, it's probably a good idea to go back and have a quick look at that. So what is a quadrilateral? Hopefully you know that the word quad probably means four in the most part, like you know, quad bikes, etc. So it means a four-sided shape, any four-sided shape. And there are lots of different types of four-sided shapes, which we'll go into um, depth later on, like squares and tri um, so squares and rectangles and parallelograms, trapeziums, etc. But what we're going to look at, like we did with the triangles, we're going to look at the angle sum of a quadrilateral first of all. Okay, the angle sum, because like the triangle, there is an exact number that if I add the four angles together of any quadrilateral in the world, it will always equal one particular value. That means if, for example, if I got that is A, B, C, and D, if I add those three, those four angles, sorry, together, they will equal a particular number. Now we looked at how to prove that for the triangle. We use those parallel lines and alternate angles. I'm going to show you a much easier method now for a quadrilateral. What I've done there, I've basically drawn a diagonal line from one corner to the other corner. And in matter of fact, what I've actually done, I've broken it up into two triangles. So a triangle up there, and you can see I might try to do an orange, a triangle down the bottom. Now why do you think I've drawn it up into two different triangles? Well, we've just learned that the angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees. So that means this bottom triangle has an angle sum of 180. This top triangle has an angle of 180. So if I add those two together, because that's what the quadrilateral is, we're going to find out the magical number of 360 degrees. So that means that the angle sum of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees all the time. Okay, all the time. So let's apply that to some questions. I'm going to start off by doing the same sort of questions that we did for the triangle. I'm going to give a quadrilateral there. I'm going to have, kind of looks like a quadrilateral, should all, be all straight lines. 50 degrees there, I'll put that as X. We'll do that as 110 degrees, and I'll do this as 140 degrees. And this is not drawn as scale, by the way. Okay, so what am I going to do? Well, like the last question we did, the triangles, we added the three triangles, so angles together equal to 180. I'm going to add the four angles here together, and they're going to equal to 360. So I'm going to start off with the X and do X plus 110 plus 140 plus 50 equals my 360 degrees. My reasoning will be angle sum of a quadrilateral equals 360 degrees. Probably don't need to put that equals 360, just angle sum of a quad will be, will be satisfactory. Um, and this question looks a bit messy, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the 110, the 140, and the 50 together. You may wish to take it away directly from 360, but I'm certainly going to add it together to clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to do 50 plus 40 is 90, plus 10 is 100, 200, 300. So X plus 300 degrees is equal to 360. My last step is to subtract my 300 degrees. So x is going to equal to 60. So it's nice and easy. I've got my x equals 60 degrees, which put that up in there. You can now see x plus 110 plus 140 plus 50 equals that 360 degrees. And job done. Let's look at example two. I'm going to do a bit more um, of a, a bit more of a complex question, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put this as 3x. I'm going to put this as, let's say, 5x minus 10 and 2x plus 20. Okay, so it looks more challenging because I've got these 3x's, 5x minus 10's, just like we did with the triangles. But remember your statement every time should be this. I'm simply going to add all the four angles together. So 3x plus 5x minus 10 plus 2x plus 20 plus, remember that's a 90 degree angle, so plus 90. So I've added all the angles together and they equal 360 degrees. Why? Because it's an angle sum of a quadrilateral. Okay, now that looks pretty messy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the x's together. So I've got 3x plus 5x is 8x 
plus 2x is 10x. So we get 10x. Now let's add the numbers together as well. That's going to be helpful. So I get minus 10 plus 20. Well, 20 minus 10 is positive 10. 10 plus 90 is 100. So we get 10x plus 100 equals 360 degrees. I've got myself a nice little equation. I'm going to take the 100 away. So I've left with 10x equals 260 degrees. Divide it by 10. I get x is equal to 26. Now, they might have an add-on question which might say, find the value of each angle. Well, in that case, I'd put, you know, this is 90 degrees. This is 3 times 26 degrees. This would be 5 times 26. I'm going to take 10 away. And this would be 2 times 26 and add 20. And obviously, you could put those values in your calculator and get the exact values of each of those four angles. And that's pretty much about it with my quadrilaterals. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Now, to the last bit, like we did with the triangles, we went through the different types of triangles. I'm going to go through the different types of quadrilaterals. However, I might call it the properties. The properties of a quadrilateral. Okay, so let's have a look at, for example, a first one. I'm going to look at the square. Now, the square can also be called a regular, a regular quadrilateral. I wonder why it's called a regular. Well, you might remember that a regular triangle was the equilateral triangle, which meant <laughs> that doesn't really look like a square, but I haven't drawn it to scale. Okay, a regular means that everything is equal. So for the square, we have all equal sides. We have all equal angles, which means if they've got four angles and they have to give 360 degrees, 360 divided by 4 equals 90 degrees. Hence, why I put the little right angle in there. I'm going to put 90 degrees there. Um, two, or another property that you might not be aware of, that if I draw the diagonals in of a square, okay, although that doesn't look like a square, the diagonals bisect each other, which means they cut each other directly in half. Bisect means to cut in half. But not just that, it bisects it at 90 degrees or at a right angle. So I'm going to put here, I might put in this color, um, diagonals, diagonals bisect each other at 90 degrees, which basically means that all the diagonals are equal as well. Okay, so certainly some good properties there of a square. Let's have a look at a rectangle now. A rectangle. Okay, so a rectangle will look like this. I'm going to put those there, those there. And you should be able to work out some properties of a rectangle just by looking at my diagram. So properties of a rectangle. Okay, we've got, um, we call them all opposite sides are equal. I guess, and you could say the parallel, because that for the square as well, I didn't mention that. Okay, they're opposite sides are parallel. You could even, um, yeah, you could say opposite sides are parallel. We can say that um, it has all equal angles. And I'm going to put in brackets, which means it's they're 90 degrees. And we're going to say that diagonals, so if I look, draw my diagonals in, and my diagonals in there. And okay, my diagonals bisect each other. Oops, each, this doesn't look like each there, does it? Let me get my rubber out, I'm going to rub that out. So diagonals bisect each other. However, they do not do so at 90 degrees. So it's just they bisect each other. And we can also say that diagonals are equal. Okay, that's for a rectangle. 
I now might do a, let's do a rhombus. Now a rhombus is kind of like a square, but it's kind of like pushed over, okay? So what do I know about a rhombus? Well, let's be honest, it's all the same properties as a square, um, except for the angle one, okay? So basically we have um, equal sides, um, we have opposite sides are parallel, um, we have um, diagonals bisect each other at 90 degrees. Okay, um, pretty much all the same properties as a square. Um, let's move on now. Let's go add a couple more pages here. Okay, so the next one we're going to do, it's kind of like, well, we did the rhombus, we may as well do this one next. We'll do the parallelogram. Now, I guess where a rhombus is like a square, a parallelogram is like a rectangle, I guess. Okay, so it's like a pushed over rectangle. Pretty much all similar properties to a rectangle, except for the equal angles. So, that means we have... Um, opposite sides are equal and parallel. We have diagonals bisect each other, but they are not equal. Okay. So those two diagonals are different lengths. However, if I cut that one, they cut that in half that cuts that one in half there. Okay, that's my parallelogram. Um, I've only got a couple more. We've got my trapezium, which is a nice easy one. Okay, looks kind of like this. You have simply one property of a trapezium and it has one pair of parallel sides. Okay. Just one pair of parallel sides. Um, it doesn't matter which side, opposite sides they are, but one pair of opposite sides are parallel. And then the very last one that we're probably going to look at is going to be what we call, although <laughs> it doesn't look terribly great, a kite. Okay, what to know about a kite? We say the adjacent sides, so the sides that are directly next to each other, there. So we're going to say adjacent sides are equal. We can also say that if we look at the diagonals, now obviously the diagonals are not equal, however, like the rhombus and the square, diagonals bisect each other at 90 degrees or at a right angle, okay, which goes in there. Okay, so look, there's the properties of the main quadrilaterals, I guess. Um, yeah, basically, if you can remember some of those in the exams, they might ask you about those different um, properties. You know, some common questions for, I guess, the working mathematical questions will be statements like this. Um, are all squares rhombuses? rhombi. Well think about it, if I've got a square, okay, let's have a look at this. For that to be a rhombus, we need to have opposite sides, or, or all sides are equal, yes, that's true. Opposite sides are parallel, okay, yes, that's true. Diagonals bisect each other at right angles, yes, that's true. So the answer would be yes. However, what if they reverse the question and said, are all rhombuses squares. Well, if I look at a rhombus, the one property of a square means that all angles are 90 degrees. And in this case, 
No, that is not the case because that rhombus does not have a 90-degree angle. So they can do certain ones like that, like you know, are all palograms rectangles, are all rectangles palograms, um, those sorts of questions. So go through those um, using your properties, and they're pretty easy to get, get through once you've looked at them. Um, you know, the one that I do like to ha I do like to see a lot actually, and people get a little bit muddled up, and they ask, are all trapeziums are all trape trapeziums um, parallelograms? I do see that one a lot. And again, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw it out. That's going to be my trapezium. Obviously, that's not a parallelogram, therefore no. But if you switched it up and asked the other way around, and you had a parallelogram and said, "Is that could that be a trapezium?" Then absolutely, because it has to have at least one pair of opposite sides that are parallel, which they are. Okay, guys. Hope you found that useful. Make sure you learn your properties of, tra of your trapeziums. Make sure you remember the angle sum, which is your most important thing. Your angle sum of a quad equals three hundred sixty degrees. And remember that a regular quadrilateral is called a square. Have a good day.